The hard part about being a writer is not coming up with ideas. It's figuring out like, well, finding the time to do it, but then like figuring out exactly what's the right fit for an idea. I was reading a book called Con Tiki by Thor Heyerdahl earlier today. I'm not finished with it, so this is not going to be a review of that book. But the general pitch of it is that in the 1940s, these Norwegian guys got it into their heads to try to sail from Peru to the South Pacific, to some Polynesian islands, in what's more or less Stone Age technology, like rafts tied together with ropes, because they wanted to prove the anthropological theory that uh, a lot of Polynesian countries had uh, a common ancestry with South American nations to the extent that they were probably populated and originated from those South American nations way back in the day. And as they're, they're talking about sailing on these rafts, I say sailing, like basically drifting on these rafts from South America to the South Pacific, it reminded me of two other books that I've read that deal with the same subject. One is called Salt, Sweat, and Tears, The Men Who Rode the Oceans by Adam Rackey. And the other is The Orphan Master's Son by Adam Johnson. Now, Salt, Sweat, and Tears is the first-hand account by two men who did, in fact, row across the ocean. I believe it was the Atlantic in modern-day technology, but it wasn't like they had a motor or anything. This was a, a long boat, basically a glorified canoe out in the ocean. But there was a below deck, so there was a place they could go to sleep and stuff. But you had very little privacy, you had very limited resources, you had to watch for storms and know what you were looking for, and sometimes you were sitting your butt in that chair for eight hours, you know, just rowing and rowing and rowing. And, uh, it was very detailed with regard to the, the logistical problems of undertaking such a feat. Uh, historically, there were men who would do that, and so what better way to learn about what that was like than by doing it yourself. And as I was reading Contiki, it reminded me of some of the salt, sweat, and tears pieces that I, you know, obviously that, that left an uh, impression on me from that reading. There was a similar subplot, we'll say there was a component of a story like that in The Orphan Master's Son, which was largely a story about a man escaping communism in North Korea in the present day. The book came out in 2012, so the information is slightly behind the curve, although I, I doubt there's a whole lot of cultural and technological progress in North Korea if you're on the ground. But this is a story with a lot of subplots, and the main character kind of weaves through all of them before coming to the end. And one of the subplots involved a girl who was sailing across the Pacific, I believe it was, either sailing or rowing by herself. Uh, older teens or early 20s, I want to say she was. And she was uploading information or broadcasting or something, and then the, the broadcast went silent because she got captured by the North Koreans. And uh, the, the main character, who was a Nork, was involved in getting her free. All of this was swimming around in my head today, and I got this random idea for a story about uh, a character, and in my head she was similarly aged and you know, early 20s and female, who was rowing across the ocean. I thought, okay, that's a good start to a story. It's a good component to a story. What do I do with it from there? I could go back and reread Salt, Sweat, and Tears to get ideas for what kind of details to include about the challenges that she's up against, but there would be no point in writing a fictional narrative if there's already a nonfiction that can very accurately depict a story like that. So what, what kind of story would I tell with a character in that setting? And what would be the point of it? It's like, well, first of all, it kind of depends on the genre. If it's a romance, well, then it depends on the type of romance. Is it a, an enemies to lovers romance where she's trying to get like followers on TikTok and she ends up competing with a, a similar account at the same time and they hate each other and then they, they both get their boats caught up in a storm and they've got to rely on each other and he's got abs and that means that he's got a great personality and by the end they're they're sailing in the same boat together and rowing in sync or is it uh, a modern feminist fantasy where she hooks up with him 
but the sex is mediocre and then they get on land and she finds out he lied to her and that he's only five foot ten and so she goes on to girl boss the rest of the way across the ocean <laughs> Uh, or am I going to go sci-fi? Like this girl is doing this sailing trip and she gets hit by a Kraken or discovers Atlantis. Like there's, there's some different things that you could do depending on the genre, but as you can see, a lot of that then makes it predictable. Louis L'Amour has this quote where he says, everything is grist for the mill. Like everything is, if your if your brain is a, a mill, if it's an engine, everything that you absorb is something that can keep those creative gears turning and keep the mill moving. I just don't know when this particular piece of grease needs to hit the, the gears to keep them moving. I could put this particular idea down and uh, like, like a writer's room on a TV show, we just put it on a post-it note, pin it to the wall and say, I'll, I'll come back to that when I've got another type of story that could combine perfectly well with it, or if it can fit into a, another narrative, we'll see. But since I've already got examples, especially in, in a fiction piece like The Orphan Master's Son, I've got an example of something that somebody else has done. I know not to duplicate that. Say, you know, don't have her get caught by the North Koreans as a political prisoner. Like, find something different to do. But there's, there's something there. Like, the idea intrigued me but I wouldn't just do it to tread the same ground that somebody else has trod. So if you've listened this far in the video, what would you do with such a story that would feel unique? What's something that hasn't been done, at least in your experience, with a, a story of somebody trying to row across one of the oceans, Pacific, Atlantic, maybe just somebody trying to sail across the Gulf of Mexico. Maybe they're slightly underprepared. Or maybe they, they think that they're prepared and then they get caught off guard by what they don't know. You know. What do they discover? What kind of setbacks are there? What's the larger challenge? Why even do this? That was one of the challenges I faced when I had the original idea for Howling Wilderness. It's like a, a race is like a sport. It's exciting, but primarily for those who are on the ground. Like, what's the story? What's the motivating factor? Is it just like... You know, what, why are you rooting for any individual contender to win? And I had to really come up with a reason for why Graveheart had to win, why Mickey had to win. Like, you can easily put together a plot where somebody needs to win because they need the money, but I wanted to go one step harder and say, like, you know, okay, what's something that Graveheart would need to win in order to, uh, to justify his motivation for this race? It's like, well, you'll get a... Uh, an honorary political appointment. Doesn't that seem a little bit weird? No, I mean, historically that's been done before. Look what happened with uh, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. I, I believe it was Lewis. It was one of them who was given a governorship uh, just because of his celebrity, not really because of any qualifications for the job, but half of politics is popularity, and he had it. So uh, such a thing is not implausible, and I could make it work for the story. But if I'm going to have somebody sailing the hard way across a large body of water, I've got to have more to the story than just how hard it would be and how much ointment you would have to put on your keister after sitting in that rowing seat for so many hours a day. This is what I'm up against as a writer. This is pretty much life. Either I can create a, a whole story very quickly or I can stow a piece of it and use it later. Everything is grist for the mill. Anyway, I highly recommend Salt, Sweat, and Tears by Adam Racky. I think The Orphan Master's Son was okay. It was an Andrew Luck book club selection. And while all of those that I read were at least generally good, I didn't find it super compelling. I just read it because I was a big fan of Andrew Luck. But Salt, Sweat, and Tears, really, really good and made all the better because it's a true story. So check that one out. Hey, thank you for watching that. Did you know that I'm also an author? You can check the description for a link to my book, Mr. Friday. It's set in a future where Black Friday is militarized and televised, and the best Friday fighters end up getting sponsors and backing, but it just so happens that the very best of them actually wants to take the holiday down. When he's approached by a couple of other like-minded fighters, he jumps at the chance, and it goes haywire from there. This is a short novella, and it's available in ebook format for just 99 cents. Drive safe. See you out there.